All right, guys, Zach Hall here. Welcome back into another video. And today we're going to be going over um, one of the big steps that I use for product research. And this is how I find some massively profitable products with Shopify that I can drop ship and, and make a ton of money along the way. <laughs> Two of the tools here that we're going to be going over that I that I use are commafeed.com. So commafeed is an RSS feed server where we can take other Shopify stores um, data feeds. I'll show you how to do the whole process. Uh, we take the data feeds and we feed it over into our comma feed server and it displays every store that you want to put in there um, in a list. And it's a completely free service. It's uh, kind of like a next level way of doing the product research because comma feeds not intended for this. This is just the way that we use it. Now, a little story with me and how I figured out and found out about comma feed and how I know nobody else in the space is using it and, and the Shopify or the WooCommerce or drop shipping space in general. Like I found it because I used to do some car dealership marketing and I would feed in car dealers inventory to here and then I would mark it off of that. Okay, so that's one of the tools we're using here, and I got some other videos up here for product research, but they all always stem back here to comma feed. Comma feed's kind of like our base, call it a CRM, right? And uh, the other tool we're using is uh, myip.ms. So myip is a website where we can look up IP addresses, and what, what I do here is I look up Shopify's IP address, and then off of that, um, I can find every other store that's on Shopify's platform. And you can do this for, like I said, WooCommerce too, or literally any other platform. Because when somebody is hosting their website through Shopify, it's going to also be listed as a, sub a subsidiary of Shopify's IP address. So when we search Shopify's IP address, we can see every other store associated with Shopify. And then we can break down from there, from keywords and traffic an awesome process guys let's jump right in here to the computer and let's get going on this because i promise you this is going to monetize your entire process with with your product research and it's going to completely be a game changer um, i've actually checked around in every single course out there when it comes to shopify drop shipping as of when i'm recording this at least um, nobody's doing this and that's why i felt like i needed to share it because this is one of the secrets that i use to generate over $100,000 a month with my drop shipping businesses. So it's enough rambling there. Let's jump on in here to the computer. Well, all right. How about there, Space Cowboy? Let's get it. All right. We're in the computer now, guys. Sorry. It's like 3.12 a.m. right now in the morning. We're still feeling good, though. A little tired because I did pull an all-nighter last night. I got about an hour of sleep during the day. But, dude, that's right. Sometimes that's what it takes. So let me just show you real briefly what we're working with here. So this is comma feed. Uh, once we get a couple uh, stores integrated in here, they're going to appear on the side. Then you're going to have a list right in the center area that's uh, um, the products. You'll see here in a second. And then we got the, the myip.ms. This is the base website right here for... Uh, how, I'm sorry, this is this is the base for IP addresses where we can um, find the IP address associated with... Um, in this case, we're going to be using Shopify. We're going to find Shopify's IP address first. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, with this, by the way, uh, this is this is just the first half to it. I didn't really go into the, the second half on how we're going to get the data feeds, and it's almost like a little tiny secret. We're almost, call it getting into the back end of Shopify. I don't even know if we're allowed to do this. I think we are, but I'm going to teach you anyway because I really don't care. Okay? So first off, we're just going to start here, guys. Go over to Google and type in Shopify IP address. That's all you got to do. It'll pop up on your... If, you use, if you're one of the 1% of the world that uses Bing, I'm sure it'll still pop up there. Or maybe when you're watching this video, DuckDuckGo finally took off. Either way, whatever you're searching on, type it in and it'll pop up. Take that IP address right there, which is... Uh, IP address is going to be it's going to be a code that it's this code right this is the exact IP address for Shopify you know if you're watching this video and you're trying to integrate this for WooCommerce or any other website you know just literally type in like the IP address of the, the brand or the business you're trying to find and it'll pop up so we got Shop Shopify's IP address here 
Okay, take that. And we'll come back over here to uh, the My IP. And, and there's two ways to do it. One, you can do it, you can just do it this way. This isn't the exact way I do it, but I'm going to show you both ways um, just so you can get a little more familiar with the platform. So you put it in here, you type it, or, or you paste it in, you search it. It pops up all the details and everything here. Not super important to you. Okay, then you can come on down to... Yeah, so I mean right now they got 145,624 live websites um, that are attached to the actual IP address that Shopify uses. Uh, you can you can come down here, yeah, and you can find uh, websites. I mean, you can break it down by the, the world site popularity ranking. Uh, it's a bunch of different options here. Uh, not super important, not super important. Uh, you know, you can see the top dogs, like the people who are the number ones on their platform, okay? But the way that we're going to want to use it here, I just figured I'd show you that so you could see how it's working, like part of the way there and then you can you can also go down you can break it down and you can you can like I said you can see the list and you can search that way this is the way right here I'm going to show you that I prefer to search on this platform uh, so we're going to go over here hover over websites world website database so it says 10 million plus she looks like 12 million okay so right here you're going to get into a screen that looks a lot like this I don't know if they've updated it by now in your time but in my time here this is what it looks like so you come here uh, right over here where it says IP owner, parent, IP owner, hosting. Uh, click on this box. Okay, just type in Shopify. Or scroll down, find Shopify. Uh, click on that. Um, or if you, again, are, I'm trying to keep this broad for whoever's using it for whatever purpose. If you're using it for WooCommerce, then, then that's part of why I showed you this process up here. Take the IP address, plug it in here, um, search it that way. So we're going to use Shopify in this example. I'm going to hit search first, and I'm going to show you um, how we can kind of break this down up here. Okay, so you can, uh, you know, organize it, whatever, by uh, the world site popularity there. That's a big one. And you can kind of go through, and they got the pages, the next, 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 next. You can keep finding them. If you want to be ambitious, go through all 3,000. Uh, so it's showing you a list of the websites that are attached to Shopify's IP address, which is literally every business on Shopify. So what you can do from here is if we're trying to find successful products for um, our drop shipping store, we want to scrape from a store that is a successful store, right? Successful products come from successful stores, vice versa. So if we're going to start here, we're going to go with 1000 site popularity. Um, we want to make sure they're at least getting 1,000 people per day. And this is just an example. I'm doing it on the fly, guys. I'm keeping this video one shot. So it's going to show you popularity between 1,000 to, I mean, it says infinity there, but, you know, we'll just keep it. We don't, we don't need to have all these other, like, high-end stuff coming up that we're never going to take from. So we'll just put it at, we'll just put it at 2,000. It's been a minute since I've did this process, too, because I've already got my comma feed pretty well booked out. So once you, I mean, really what's kind of cool about this is once you go through this process, it's not like you have to, I mean, it's good to like keep fresh on it and like keep updating your comma feed as stores, like, like as people sell their stores or as if stuff changes, the market shifts, like it's good to keep it updated, but it's not something you like have to do indefinitely. It's just something you set up once. Okay. So we'll go through here. Let's just find one store so I can show you how to do this. Uh, something that kind of looks like a. Yeah, what about this? Catslovelife.com. So you either click on it, copy it, type it in, whatever. Uh, we'll take it up here, right into the tab. Search it, catslovelife.com. What do they got here? So it's obviously, like I said, it's a Shopify store. So we already know that much. Yeah, it looks like they're just selling an array of stuff. And one of the one of the little tricks you can do to to on any Shopify store, if you want to see every single product they have on their website, so you go up to the URL at the top, you put a forward slash after their dot com, and then you put collections forward slash all. So their website dot com forward slash collections forward slash all. Hit enter, and it'll pop up a. Yeah, there we go. Pop up a list of all their products that are on there. So they have a very, very vast amount of stuff on there. Now, usually in a lot of cases, 
Uh, and again, this depends on your perspective, but the way I teach my students when I mentor people is uh, start your when you're when you're starting with drop shipping or you're, or you're starting to grow your own personal brand thing or not personal brand business brand start general because you don't know what's going to sell until you know what sells so that's why you should start general and then you should let that dictate you going niche specific but again it's your perspective like if if, if you want to blow up a brand you have a passion for the fact that you want to blow, blow up a business brand based around cats then do it, do, it, do it the niche specific way. Do it this way. So if we want to take this cat's love life store and we want to integrate it over to um, our comma feed, if we want to take this, okay, URL right up here at the top, catslovelife.com forward slash collections forward slash all, okay? Now this is how we structure the data feed. Very, very simple. Don't blink because you'll miss it. Okay, so after the all, put dot A-T-O-M. Okay, so dot atom. That's how you structure your data feed for any Shopify store. Okay, now we'll come back over here to comma feed. I didn't go through the sign up process here. It's it's a completely free thing. It doesn't cost you a dime. Um, there's probably there are a million other RSS servers things that you can use out there. Like you don't have to use comma feed. There's it's just the easiest one that I know how to use. Uh, so you come back over here to comma feed. Super simple to sign up. You click the subscribe button up in the top left. So we'll click on that. We'll take this URL right here. I'm sorry, right here. Okay, copy that. So website.com forward slash collections forward slash all dot atom. Copy that right over to comma feed. Put it as your feed URL right there. Okay, and your feed name is going to be well. That already populates in there. So I usually just name it the um, the website's name. And then you can categorize it if you want. You'd have to create a category first, but um, this is just an example. So once that's on, click save. Okay, now let me show you how this goes. Okay, so we're sitting here. We have uh, any every product that they put on that website is now going to automatically pop up in here. So right now, today is July, Friday, July the 12th of 2009. It doesn't show that they're putting anything on re regularly, right? It's probably a one-man operation, one-woman operation. They haven't put anything on in the past four days. So they're not a consistent store. So what you can do is you just keep going through. You keep finding more stores. You put them in here to test. Um, you check out the products, see if they fit your description, your general rule of thumb, right? So if I'm running a general store, I generally want to see stuff in the range of $30 to $80 because that's the sweet spot usually for most sales when it comes to most things in sales because, um, you know, it's that range where people don't have to ask their friends, like, if should I buy this? Like, they don't have to double think on it. Like, they don't ask, should I, should I buy this or is it going to be a stupid investment? Like, they'll make an impulse sale on it is what I'm getting at. Uh, the way I run my stores also is a little bit different than most people. I run them so I can scale up and sell off the information so it's not like I'm looking to grow long-term brands um, or if I'm looking to make a ton of money then I just sell super high ticket items but I just have a different approach so you just would keep finding more and more websites keep plugging them in and as you plug them in multiple they're just gonna compile up down here so let's say you get a good list of products I'm sorry a good list of stores going here that you um, like that fit your criteria on what you're selling or what you want to like scrape from then you just go through the list guys and this is where uh, in my other videos I'm gonna go deeper into the product research from this point um, because I don't want to like keep this video two hours long because you're not gonna watch the whole thing let's be honest uh, but once you get to this point guys you can go through you can click on the listings that pops it up right you can copy everything there if you want to tell you the price uh, tell you a little bit of information about it, the picture. You can go right to the link for that product. It's just awesome the way it works. And, and this comma feed is so much bigger than just Shopify. Like you can literally do this for any like anything that has an inventory feed on the website. So I used to use it for car dealerships all the time. It's it's just an awesome website, awesome service. So you go through the list. You know you can take the products and then you from this point do your product research so it takes a lot of the guesswork out of there monetizes about half the process of the product research alone for you just with this process alone guys um so yeah that's really all we have there you know if you learn something good here 
you know, I really appreciate the thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. You know, it shows YouTube, it shows the search engines that what I'm putting out is actually good quality content that people sh people are engaging with. So people, um, so it's going to feel like people want to continue to engage with it, right? So they're going to push me out to um, more and more people. Like I give all my content away for free, guys. Those of you that follow me, those of you that know me, um, that watch my stuff, like you know, I give very very high end stuff out completely for free. I don't believe in charging for courses. I actually have a video over on that. So if you like this video here, guys, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, uh, shoot me a message over there and share it with all of your friends.